Hello, this is Alex. Welcome to Socialism Survival Podcast number 18. And this time, I am happy to present you Self-Sufficient Homestead Podcast and its hosts, Johnny Max and The Queen. To find out more about them, please visit sshomestead.com. To join Socialism Survival community and to listen to my other podcasts, please go to socialismsurvival.com. The following audio is complete replay of Self-Sufficient Homestead podcast number 56 that features interview with me, Socialism Survivor Alex. Listen and enjoy. Beer cans line the driveway, oil stains on the lawn, a mother doe in the backyard, nursing her new fawn, mama's in the hedge grove, tending to her still. The best corn whiskey, mister, this side of our hill. Walking time in a copper mine, making payments on this estate. The deeds are lean at the courthouse, and the bank still holds on fairly to this Hill Valley homestead. That's where I hang my hat. On the front porch, there, the rocking chair, and beneath it, a All right, welcome to the self-sufficient homestead. Live wise today, live well tomorrow. This is show number 56. On this show, we have an interview. With Alex, who also has a podcast. The Surviving Socialism Podcast. He grew up in the Ukraine and his wife in Russia. I'm Johnny Max. I'm the Queen. Welcome to our homestead. Find a comfortable spot. Let's chew the fat. And shoot the breeze. All right, let's get the contact information out of the way real quick uh, so we can get to the interview. Uh, If you want to uh, email both of us, you can email feedback at sshomestead.com. Or the Queen at queen at sshomestead.com. Or me individually, Johnny Max at sshomestead.com. And then our website is www.sshomestead.com. You can download uh, or listen to streaming our shows from the website or from iTunes. Or you can call us on the home phone at 409-681-HOME. That's H-O-M-E. Or that's, again, 409-681-4663. Yeah, call and leave us some feedback. And you can also get the, get to us with Skype. So we're going to go ahead and you want to cut? Let's cut to the interview because it was a All good right. long interview. It was good. It was All long. Right. <laughs> All right. Here's Alex. All right, we are on the phone with Alex. Alex was born in the Ukraine, former Soviet Republic. Third of nine children, seven boys, two girls. Son and grandson of Gulag camp survivors. Alex survived heavy persecution himself. During perestroika, his family immigrated to the U.S., but Alex decided to stay in the Soviet Union for ministry to street youth. After traveling to many countries as a speaker and a one-man band, Alex joined his family in the U.S. in 2001, where he also got married to a beautiful Princess Lana, and they have two wonderful children together. Uh, Together they reside in Central Florida, where Alex found good use of his music studio equipment. Using his uh, socialism experience, Alex records the uh, Socialism Survival Podcast, warning American people of the danger of socialism and how to survive it. Welcome to the Self-Sufficient Homestead, Alex. How are you doing? Thank you. Thank you, Jenny Marks and Queen. I'm doing good, and I'm ready to go with this show. Uh, thank you very much for your show, first of all, and thank you for inviting me to be a part of well, this we're, show. We're very excited about having you. Yeah, and uh, now your your show, uh, the Socialism Survival Podcast. How how is that a fairly new show? 
Yes, uh, I started the show in uh, September, and uh, it's an interesting uh, story uh, how I started it. Of course, I had, uh, as I, you said, I had my socialism experience. <laughs> it's always with me. It yeah. will, will never go away uh, to, to the end of my life. And uh, I had some equipment that, uh, of course, uh, equipment is a different thing. It gets older and older. And I was thinking, why is sitting over there in, in the boxes? Um, I used to live before Florida. I used to live in Oregon, and I was recording some music over there. And I bought some equipment, and then I moved here, and it was sitting in the boxes, you know. And I was um, listening to... Uh, survival podcast I was listening uh, since uh, May probably May or beginning of June I think it's May uh, but anyway uh, I was listening to his shows uh, and uh, then I heard you guys uh, ah. you had uh, yeah uh, that's, that's how I found you you know so we have to give credit to Jack oh, for definitely. inviting you first <laughs> I, lo I love Jack Spirico <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> he actually uh, kind of motivated. Uh, I think he's excellent, a motivating, uh, motivational speaker, uh, because he motivated me. In kind of in starting uh, the show, he was speaking with his, uh, you know, excellent uh, uh, motivational voice. That you, you can do that. You can, if you yeah. have the idea, if you have something to say, you can start a podcast. I said, well. And Maybe then, he's talking to me. Maybe he's talking to me. So. Yeah. And then you and then you listen to our show and go, well, gee, anybody can do a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> they can do it. <laughs> yeah. And when, and, and, and when I saw you uh, saw your picture on your website, uh, I mean on, on the very top, not not the one in the middle, but on the very top where you stand by the microphone. Uh, I mean, the <laughs> rooster and... <laughs> oh, the chicken, yeah. I'm, a, I, I'm the rooster. The queen is the chicken. Now, I have listened to your podcast. Now, we were talking to you on the phone just before we recorded, and I told the queen, I said, he's not that hard to understand with his accent. She says, well, he's kind of hard. See, she hasn't been listening to your shows like I have. Uh, the first mm -hmm. time I listened to your first show, you had a very strong Russian accent, which was uh, took a little education upon my ear to understand you completely and i appreciate that of course texans that. are hard to understand too so alex bear with us yeah can you understand my te <laughs> can you understand my, te yeah, my it, texas it, it, guys, <laughs> it, it took a, a long time for me to learn all this uh, american accents or dialects or whatever you call it well you understand what y'all means right y'all 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 yeah no 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 not not y'all Please don't yell. Yeah. <laughs> Just oh, no, no. Y'all, like y'all, listen to me because I'm talking to y'all. You know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and in, yeah. in Texas language, they don't say I N G. They say I N. Like we're fixing to do something. We're not fixing, fixing to do something. Yeah. We're not hunting. Well, we're not hunting. We're hunting. <laughs> we're not fishing. We're not fishing. We're it's fishing. It's not correct English grammar, but it's just the way Texas yeah, people Yeah, we're fishing. Talk. We're hunting. Uh, we're doing. We're podcasting. You know. <laughs> well, let me let me get to the meat of the interview because I have been really excited about this interview since I've been listening to your podcast, and I'd communicated you with uh, through emails just a little bit, and you were were born in the Ukraine, correct? Yes, uh, actually, uh, the, as uh, we started uh, mentioning uh, Jack Spirka, that also kind of uh, was interesting that uh, this guy has a kind of Ukrainian background, you know. Well, I didn't know that. Well. You told me. well, I thought maybe maybe one uh, one more Ukrainian uh, would be, uh, you know, adding some kind of flavor to all this uh, podcasting uh, world, you know. Yeah. Now, I did want to ask you before we get into your your history. When you said you were recording music in, uh, was it Arkansas, Alabama? Where did you say it was? With your no, Oregon. Oregon. Oregon, Oregon. I was close. It started with a consonant or vowel. I mean, I'm thinking, uh, <laughs> I'm, was it harmonica music? Uh, well, yeah, I play uh, guitar and uh, harmonica together. You know, some people uh, think I'm uh, I'm Bob Dylan number two. So. Hey, Mr. Bob Dylan number two, you need to send me one. Send me one, and we'll close. The, well, we can't. I already got one to close the show with it. 
with, but uh, I'll, th- I'll close the interview with you if you got one. Do you have something on recording you can send to me? Uh, something that uh, you you're... know, I, it, oh. it it probably can be in a, in a different kind of uh, files, but uh, during the course of the show, if uh, uh, it will be easy enough for me to get. Uh, well, we'll do it at a later yeah. date. Send it to me, and uh, we'll remind all of our listeners that who it is singing. And uh, we'll throw you in. Playing. Uh, playing. He's not singing. He's well, playing. Well, you're not playing. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll remind him who's playing, and it'll be you uh, playing the harmonica and the guitar. And he now, knows I'm, you're playing, <laughs> not playing. No, I'm playing. Yeah, that's what I said, playing. Yeah. Not playing. That's, that's, that's Yankee talk. Uh, anyway, we don't have to push that. But I, I remember in one of your emails when I was talking, you, you had said something about you, as a, as a youth, remember uh, walking through potato fields, picking off worms off the plants and throwing them into a can of kerosene? Yes, that's how we, that's how we tortured that uh, <laughs> bugs, you know. That we were eating green uh, shootings of the potatoes. Don't let the tree huggers hear you. Now, when you when you wrote that to me, I thought about that. And I thought, man, if I was to pluck bl- bugs off my leaves, how can I utilize those bugs? I'm thinking, I could I could throw them into uh, water or anything into a can, and then feed them to my chickens or my tilapia. And uh, <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? And uh, more, I let the bugs get fat off my plants, and I pluck them off, and I feed them to my chickens, and they give me eggs. Uh, hey, you know, Johnny Max, uh, uh, living in America and especially listening to your show, I'm getting a lot because, you know, uh, when we lived there, we didn't have that, uh, you know, many ideas. Like I hear now about this uh, uh, aquaponics, oh. yeah, aquaponics, hydroponics, uh, you know, actually in a, a religious congregation that we are now in Orlando uh, we have like on the on, on the property we have uh, hydroponics uh, yeah. v- v- vertical grow you know like vertical growing you know oh yeah yeah so uh, that uh, that gave us uh, you know some interest in the, then listening to your show and well and learning more and finding uh, some uh, he- hearing some links uh, on your show and checking them, you know, online uh, about uh, all this stuff. It's just exciting, you know. There's so many uh, new opportunities that uh, are opening uh, year after year. Uh, I wish they, I wish we could have something like that back in the Ukraine. But now, uh, now here, here, here's a challenge to you. Uh, I recommend it before you do a big aquaponics system. Do like I did. Just get a a small aquarium or a small rubber tub and set it up very small and figure out how it works and you'll be surprised how it works but since you uh you do know russian maybe you can set up a website that's all russian and call it russian aquaponics or something like that and uh you might start a trend in russia so that a lot of people be- can become self-sufficient see i can't do that because i don't speak russian yeah, actually, I was thinking, uh, like I, I'm doing um, Socialism Survival podcast, and I have uh, a website in English for socialismsurvival.com, but I don't have even for that something uh, in uh, Russian. So I was thinking, uh, I'm still kind of, uh, how you call it, brewing in in my mind, right? Oh, hey, Is that right? You're talking about brewing, brewing beer? Bre- uh, thinking, you're yeah, brewing in your mind. Yeah, 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 I know yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, yeah but yeah. Yeah, but can I say, like, the idea is brewing in my mind? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's homebrew yeah. talk there. I can think that. You're right on, brother. <laughs> yeah, you're, that is so, correct. So, uh, but so, you're correct. That's so, a correct so, statement. That is correct. Yeah, so so thank you for adding kind of like some of, uh, some of spices uh, to that brewing process uh, in, in my mind. You yeah, know? You, need, you need to have a uh, homebrewing site for Russians, and uh, I can be your consultant, and you can translate <laughs> what I say, because we have, that was one of our goals on Brew Crazy, was to get listeners in Russia, but they would have to be listeners that spoke We have to English. talk about vodka. Vodka. That's, uh, well, that's fermented well, potatoes. Well, listen, guys, uh, yeah, we kind of... Uh, we're, now, we're getting off the uh, subject here. Working around uh, brewing and wine making. Okay, let's, uh, let's, let me talk about that. Uh, back in uh, 
in Russia, I mean, in Soviet Union, uh, or even it was uh, illegal to make like alcohol oh, drinks, uh, uh, and people could get in a jail or uh, get a huge fine for that. But oh, people wow. still were doing some kind of. Uh, mostly people were doing uh, what was called samogon. Samogon was like uh, uh, homemade uh, vodka. They like uh, they take sugar beets. Uh, boil them, take that sweet water with uh, yeah. yeast, you know, and then uh, all that uh, yeast works, uh, and makes, then makes the alcohol. Uh, they, they they distill that, and uh, uh, the distilled uh, substance uh, uh, was that kind of uh, <laughs> vodka. homemade vodka. But you yeah. know, they could have just drank the water before they distilled it, the, the fermented beet. Uh, fermented uh, sugars from the beet too. That would be a, a beet beer, I guess, or a beet wine. Uh, but yeah, vodka's, well, vodka's well, better. Well, yeah, yeah. I, actually, actually, some people because uh, in the uh, Soviet Union war and still in Russia and former Soviet republics are uh, many people who like to drink alcohol. Uh, or how you call them, alcoholic. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I don't like to so, drink so, alcohol. So, so, I, do, I only so, do it so, for the show. So, so, the, so they, they they cannot wait uh, till the distilled process. So they doing exactly, exactly what you are saying, you know. Uh, well, they would, just drink that. Uh, it would that, be a beet uh, wine. Beet wine, yeah, it yeah. It would be a beet wine. That, uh, much lower in alcohol uh, than the distilled product. Yeah, yeah. R- R- Russian Russian word for that is brashka. Wait, brashka. Wait, wait. Can you say brashka? Spell it out for me, please, sir. B R A. B R A Z H K A. Braska. I'm going to make me some braska. <laughs> that would be fermented uh, beets. I'm going to grow beets. I'm going to grow beets and make me some braska. Actually, actually Johnny Max. Uh, You're messing uh, me up. You, You're making uh, me go downhill, I, uh, man. I want to give you one historical uh, information about meat. Probably you didn't hear that uh, yet uh, from anyone else. Okay. Uh, in uh, Russia, in like old uh, Russian uh, fairy tales, they used to have such the ending. And I, I used to hear that as a child uh, in Soviet Union. And it was ending like that. And I was there, drank honey and beer. It ran down my mustache, but didn't get to my mouth. And I was thinking, how people uh, can drink uh, uh, honey? And uh, <laughs> now listening, listening to your show, I understand what it means because, and actually in Russian, um, word for uh, honey is med, and in Ukrainian, word for honey is med. Med, med, mead. You huh. get the idea. All right, Johnny oh. Max enlightens Russians to the true meaning of mead. You heard it right here. <laughs> no, Alex did. Alex, Alex well, did that. I didn't realize that I was prophesying such, you know, such things. Cool. Now, now I want to ask you what it was like living in a. Now, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand. I know that the USSR broke up in the 80s. I'm thinking. Uh, Late 80s? 1991. 91, okay, late 80, 91. Now, so you yeah. lived there when it was the USSR. Now, what oh, was yeah. it? Now, can you explain what it is like to live under socialism in the Republic of Russia? What, what's USSR stand for? United? Uh, <laughs> Union of Soviet. Uh, uh, socialistic uh, republics, but I also uh, added a uh, little change: Union of Soviet uh, Slave Republics. Okay. So, what was it like to live in the Union of Soviet Slave Republic? Now, they they don't exist anymore, but a lot of their their beliefs carry on in their states. Uh, do you have any stories? Well, uh, in Soviet Union, we uh, always wanted to be. Uh, as uh, much self-sufficient as possible, you know, we didn't want to depend on government, uh, especially we ha- as we had, uh, I mean, my parents had uh, such a big family uh, to feed uh, 
so many stomachs, you know, <laughs> to take care for so many people. And sal salaries uh, were uh, uh, very low because uh, I, I tell you, we were, uh, it was just a, a slavery. And uh, whatever we worked for, like in a factory or a plant or uh, in a collective farm or whatever, uh, what uh, people understand they used to pay over here, you know, fair pay. We didn't have such thing as fair pay. Uh, government decided what is uh, fair to pay you, you know. Well, what are you talking so, about? What, what kind of pay are you talking about so we can, our listeners can have an understanding of what they paid you as compared to what you consider fair pay to be? Well, um, I know it's a tough at, question because uh, that was then and this is now. Yeah, at that time, I think uh, the exchange of dollar to ruble was like uh, uh, for for 60 uh, Russian Soviet copies uh, uh, was one dollar. So uh, they they uh, kind of artificially kept, you know, that uh, high exchange rate in uh, Soviet Union. And uh, even with that, like I was working on uh, one uh, industrial plant where they made some additives for a steel. It was hard work, really hard work. I had to c uh, crawl uh, under uh, uh, the melting pot of uh, uh, metal, you know. <laughs> yeah, and uh, uh, I, I was paid uh, like uh, uh, 200 uh, uh, 50 uh, rubles for that, so it's uh, now, let's is say that, it was is that like per maybe week? Is, wait, is that 250 per week, per day, per month, or per month? Now, what is the exchange was, rate on a of a ruble it, it, at that it, time? It, 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 so, so let's say it, uh, roughly it was like uh, uh, maybe 300, 350 dollars. Now, was, uh, was that a dangerous but, but, job? But, but of course, it was difficult, uh, you know, even to compare because uh, uh, owning a dollar was illegal in Soviet Union. If uh, you was caught uh, with uh, dollars in your hand, you would get in a jail. So, really? If, you had, if, if they was, caught you with wow, an American dollar, currency. you went to jail. Wow. Yeah, well, yeah, American dollars or, or maybe some some uh, British pounds or, or German marks or whatever. I've got to uh, ask you know. because here in the United States during the 80s and the 90s, you know, they said uh, if you go to Russia and you have a bunch of Levi's blue jeans, you're rich. So is that true? What if they caught you with some American blue jeans? Would you get in trouble? Levi's? Mm, no, no. Uh, as uh, far as I as didn't catch you, uh, you know, dealing with uh, American in a dark room somewhere, you know, uh, if they would catch you in one room with uh, another American, like American person, uh, that would be another reason to put you in jail because they could just tell, oh, he's a he's an American spy. They, they 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 won't mention a jeans. Jeans is okay, you know, uh, all people. Uh, especially, especially young people in the Soviet Union wanted to have uh, American jeans. Uh, I wish I would have. I would be the coolest boy on the uh, in my class or, or on the street, whatever. Mm, yeah, but uh, they wouldn't men wouldn't mention uh, uh, jeans. They would uh, tell all our awful stories uh, uh, that uh, they caught. Uh, uh, American spy and uh, Soviet uh, man or woman cooperating with uh, Americans, you know, and they oh, would uh, build a, uh, you know, like a spy uh, process, you know. Oh, so, so they say they really did try to keep people from communicating with Americans, basically, is what we had in Soviet Union. We had uh, collective farms. Yes. You know, when when they took um, like cows and uh, chickens. Uh, from people, they put uh, them in a collective uh, area, and they <laughs> wanted people to come and. So was, and, that, was uh, that like a tax? The, what was that like a tax when they would take their cattle, or why would they take? No, their no, no, cows? no, no, no. It, it was a process called uh, 
collectivization. Collectivization. That, uh, 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 no, that, that nobody had to own anything. Ah. That all everything should be uh, collective. Like so we uh, living a big uh, commune, you know. Okay, so you have a whole bunch of cattle, and you feed them, and you take care of them, and they multiply. You have a bunch of calves, you take care of them, and they multiply. You have a bunch of chickens, you, uh, the eggs hatch, you end up with a huge flock of chickens, more chickens than you should have. <coughs> is, that, is that what it is? The government says, you have more chickens, and you have more cows than you should have. And there are well, no, 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 no. Even if you have one cow, you you already have too much. So they would take them from you. Yeah, yeah. There was there was such time. Then uh, uh, what after, year, uh, Joseph, Alec? After Joseph, wait, yeah. Alec. What year? What year are we talking about? That this was this. Well, we're talking from 1917, 18. You know, after the uh, revolution, uh, there was uh, there, there was some. Uh, period before like um, at the end of 1920s that they allowed people to have a lot but they just allowed uh, that uh, and they had in mind to steal that from people so beginning in 1930s uh, they started that process called collectivization when we when they took everything even people had grain to uh, be sown in the fields and they took that grain from people, so people didn't have what to sow in a field. And uh, there was, uh, especially it touched the Ukraine, it was the, that artificial uh, uh, famine that uh, people laid uh, down in, on the streets in the piles, uh, oh, you know, and, no, and there was nobody to, to bury them. So when, I, when I'm talking in my... Um, podcast about uh, socialism that I'm I'm saying uh, it, uh, that it is uh, pure evil as it is you know there's uh, no double uh, talk it's uh, just uh, you experienced uh, it you lived evil it period. what's your address to your podcast yeah um, uh, the address of my podcast is uh, Socialism survival dot com. Socialism survival dot com. Now, if they have an iPod and they want to find you on iTunes, I guess they could just do socialism survival search, and you will come up. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Socialism survival, socialism survival podcast. It will uh, uh, pop up on iTunes uh, right away. And uh, in your podcast, I guess you you have a lot of stories, and you talk about everything as far as what you have gone through and uh, what we need to be wary of. Now, let me let me transfer this just a little bit uh, as far as what we as Americans, because I really don't want this show to be political, and your show is political, and so I, I apologize to my listeners. But I, I have to ask the question, how does that apply to Americans as far as socialism? Analyzing uh, what uh, happened in America even before I came here, uh, it gave me the idea that uh, socialism is already here. One important uh, detail of socialism is atheism. It's uh, fighting religion, fighting God, fighting... Um, oh, atheism. Uh, Atheism. I didn't yeah, understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Atheism, and uh, I just uh, can see how the uh, the atheists uh, and the, all these godless elements they were attacking uh, Judeo-Christian uh, foundation of America. How they threw out uh, a Bible prayer from the schools. You know, uh, even when I came in America, I wa I watched uh, all that. Uh, Ten Commandments, uh, ACLU fighting, you know, to remove Ten Commandments from courthouse. So, so I, I could see, I could see clearly that uh, they are on the uh, move, and they can uh, cover up uh, themselves. Uh, the socialists, uh, they can try to cover themselves with um, uh, talking that they want to take care of uh, middle class or poor people. That all the just mouth talk. Nobody uh, wants to care about anyone except the power. Now, here in America, we kind of think 
that Russia is kind of like suppressed and it's not Christians. And when there is Christians, it's like the Greek Orthodox Church is like, oh, 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 oh. you know what I'm saying? Uh, but just, li- just listening to you talk in this podcast, I kind of get the feeling that you're an on fire, uh, born again, blood bought Christian that has a fire in you that, man, I kind of wish I had. Uh, how did that happen under those circumstances being suppressed in Soviet socialist uh, Russia? Well, uh, my family uh, were uh, Christians, believers uh, in God, and uh, served God in that kind of uh, circumstances uh, while there was persecution. My, my grandfather, both my grandfather and my father, as you mentioned, uh, they both were uh, in uh, Gulag uh, after uh, uh, World War II. Gulag uh, is a, a Soviet uh, uh, system of uh, prison camps uh, prison and labor camps. camps. There is a narrow uh, uh, understanding of Gulag, just a camps uh, that uh, were uh, during Stalin regime. Stalin, uh, but Stalin. Uh, in, in, the, in the white uh, meaning of Gulag, it started uh, after October Revolution with Lenin, and it uh, uh, continued uh, till the Soviet Union dissolution. Stalin, he came to power uh, in 1922, uh, and he was uh, there, uh, you know, the general secretary of Communist Party of Soviet Union. Uh, the, the, it was actually the highest uh, post uh, in Soviet Union, so he was until his death in 1953. People temporary, uh, uh, like for a few temp- months, but uh, the biggest guy was uh, Nikita Khrushchev. It's the one who uh, who came to America and who was uh, uh, took his shoes and was uh, hitting the podium uh, during uh-huh. his speech. After him uh, was Leonid Brezhnev. Now, did he make life better for Socialist Soviet Republic? Of Russia. Well, well you know, uh, the thing uh, uh, got uh, some kind of uh, better. It doesn't mean that we uh, uh, stopped to be uh, Soviet slaves, but uh, they kind of gave uh, people opportunity to use the land. You know, people couldn't own the land, but it was kind of like a free use of the land because they. Uh, Understand that if people, uh, more people survive, uh, the more people can uh, uh, work for the good of socialism. You know, so they allowed people to have, uh, you know, some piece of land with a home on it and yes. uh, uh, grow something. About... So, 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 so at that time they didn't take already. You know, they didn't take uh, 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 livestock or chicken from people. People okay. were. Uh, able to grow, uh, you know, many things. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, let me t- uh, say this. Uh, I've heard here in America some people say if, uh, you know, socialism is that bad, uh, so why bother uh, with building homestead? Yeah. Uh, so uh, I want to say that, um, you know, if uh, Soviet people were thinking like that, we would never survive. No matter what happened to us, no matter how hard we were oppressed, uh, we still, you know, we still rose up. We still took a chance. We st- still uh, took the opportunity, you know, to take that land and uh, build and, on it and, and take uh, care grow. of your, and take care of uh, your family, right? Yes, yes, and take care of family. Uh, because, you know, I, I mentioned that uh, artificial famine during the uh, 1930s, uh, so many people died. You said artificial famine. Why do you say artificial? Yes, artificial famine. They, as I said, they t- took from people their seeds, uh, uh, you know, and uh, uh, so people couldn't grow uh, anymore their own food. So they, the took, they, were, they took what they grew away from them, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, even my uh, uncles uh, and aunts uh, died uh, when they were little. So if uh, 
there was not such thing. I would uh, be a uh, more happier uh, man having more uh, aunts and uncles who uh, who died in, in the famine. You know. How would you compare the freedoms that we have in the United States of America compared to the Socialist Soviet Republic of Russia? Uh, man, <laughs> you guys still have so much... Uh, uh, opportunities with uh, freedom to own uh, land uh, property okay. i never owned uh, land in uh, uh, ukraine or, or, or russia, russia. And, and at that time at soviet union as i said we couldn't own the land so in soviet union people lived in fear you know right now people can uh, uh, own uh, land in the Ukraine and Russia. It uh, got uh, uh, changed uh, some way after the Soviet Union dissolution, what I'm saying oh, about the yes. uh, Soviet Union, about socialistic uh, regime. And we could not own uh, land uh, in Soviet Union. So in a socialist, Repub a socialist Republic of Russia, you could not own land. The government owned it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All land belonged to the state. You was just a a, you allowed to use that land. I don't want uh, that uh, hands of socialism to be anywhere near uh, people's land, because uh, taking uh, land from people, taking uh, uh, freedom, it's taking freedom from people. I, I appreciate uh, living without uh, fear of being uh, taken somewhere. If you lived in Russia and you had the podcast that you have now, Surviving Socialism, he'd be in jail. What would well, what would you be afraid of? I mean, uh, they, Russia's come a long way. They're not the gulag state that you've talked about earlier. I mean, you would be okay. You could do this, could you not? Well, you know, even uh, at this time, uh, some uh, journalists uh, who wants to. Uh, say something that is not pleasing a government, they are disappearing in uh, Russia. So it, it was much worse uh, during Soviet regime. You know, so uh, I wouldn't be I, I wouldn't be able to have a podcast in Soviet Union unless I was living uh, completely underground and it was such a secret location that nobody knew. But even uh, some th there were some uh, Christian uh, radio stations. They they were underground. I I I don't have any any fear now. Of course, I have uh, to, to be to be cautious, you know, in in some way. But uh, that's uh, you know probably uh, there there is a little risk uh, everywhere, you know. Yeah. But at least, um, actually, we as we begin to speak about uh, the freedom of speech. I have one uh, uh, Russian anecdote. There was a Soviet sparrow that flew over the border to the west. And uh, he was asked by Western sparrow, is it so bad with food in Russia? No. A Russian sparrow answered, we have plenty. Nowhere you will find so much grain on the ground as in Russia. So what's the problem? Why you didn't stay there? A Russian sparrow answered, I wanted badly to chirp. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, by, by the way, I, before I wanted to say uh, another, another anecdote about uh, Soviet collective farm. So can you imagine uh, coming to Soviet collective farm and seeing all cows uh, wearing muzzles? Muzzles? Yeah, muzzles, 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 like hold, muzzle a dog. Yeah, muzzles yeah, okay. holding their holding their mouth. Why would they have muzzles? Yeah, why would they have muzzles? <laughs> yeah, no, 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 like like masks. Okay. <laughs> yes, I understand. Yeah, and and uh, and the uh, guy, uh, like American guy, comes and asks, uh, "What are they biting?" <laughs> and uh, uh, and the uh, uh, Russian collective farmer uh, answers, "No, they are eating too much." Oh. <laughs> Oh, oh, boy, boo that's, him, oh, that's man, Alex, that speaks volumes. <laughs> uh, Russia really suppressed Christianity, especially the, the type of Christianity that you have. In your bio that you sent me, and I had read, 
said that when your family came to the United States of America to flee a perestroika, that you decided not to flee with them and you stayed in uh, Ukraine and you, you traveled to different countries as a street minister to youth for Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, basically that's uh, that is. Uh, since uh, being a teenager, I learned to play guitar and uh, some people uh, probably think that if uh, Christians, believers are uh, prosecuted, uh, it uh, will uh, uh, lower the numbers of believers, but uh, what happened uh, that uh, the f- people of faith they grew in numbers in Soviet Union, uh, and uh, I- even the, even the Khrushchev who took uh, after Stalin, he said he will show uh, last uh, Christian in uh, in 1970s uh, uh, or somewhere like that. So, so are you saying in Russia they tried to persuade you not to be a Christian? Is that what? Oh you're yeah, uh, yeah. The, the 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 atheistic propaganda was uh, paid by. Uh, 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 government. I, I mean, we paid for uh, for our own indoctrination uh, through taxation. You know, uh, uh, my family were uh, uh, you know strong uh, uh, Christians, strong believers, uh, uh, and uh, as I said, my, my my grandfather and my father they both were in a, a Stalin's death camps uh, oh, uh, God, yeah. because of their faith, because of their fa- faith in God. And having such a having such a history, uh, and know, knowing the truth, you know, uh, of what socialism is about and what uh, uh, God uh, gives you, you know, uh, it wasn't a really hard choice for me, you know. Although uh, everyone had to make a choice, because if you choose to be with God, you choose to be potential. Uh, potentially persecuted. W- one thing that uh, touched our family was the death of uh, my mother, our mother. She died when she was 42. And my mother's name was Dina. So it's a biblical name. It's a daughter of uh, uh, Jacob or Israel. You know, oh, was, that is so name. cool. It's, it's amazing you know, that we think of the uh, Socialist Republic of Russia being non-Christian, and you come out of it and uh, you are so in tune with God, probably more than most of us uh, so-called Christians in the United States of America. Yeah, and uh, uh, I was uh, saying about my mom, and uh, in one, in two of my podcasts, I am speaking about uh, socialistic healthcare, and my mom, she became a victim of Soviet system of socialistic healthcare. Oh my and God. she died. Uh, she died. She died so young, and she was pregnant with a tenth child. And neither she nor child were saved. Although child was oh. like seven months uh, in her womb, uh, you know. And uh, we couldn't find the truth about her death and uh, what really happened. Oh my God! Uh, and because because our our family at that, at that time was already involved in a kind of immigration. Uh, movement, so we were uh, politically active, and I thought, and we all have that strong conviction that she was just, uh, you know, put to death, you know, for some uh, of this well, political. We will be walking the streets of gold with your mother and her baby, and her baby will be perfect in God's eyes. She has never sinned, and God will have some special work for her that we would never be capable of doing because we have lived a life that we are sinners. You know what I'm talking about? But yes. uh, yes. but your sister has never sinned, and God will use her for some more noble and glorious purpose that we would never be capable of. And I just pray to God that uh, I'll meet you in heaven, and uh, I'll get to meet your sister, and I'll probably look up to her because she will be exalted. Uh, and someone who's who's flawless and perfect, which I could never be. I I believe, and I'm looking forward to meeting my sister too. Uh, you know, she she would be a beautiful child, but unfortunately, they they even didn't give us to bury her. I don't know what uh, they uh, did with her. Yeah, That's they horrible. they they said that, uh, they told my dad they they will make a. 
um, uh, cesarean section to trying to save uh, mom or maybe oh my baby God, too. That's, that's horrendous. And, and, they, and they did the surgery and mom died and we, we don't have uh, even a, any uh, slight idea what happened that with, a, with a baby's body, you know. Oh my God. Here in the United States, if they had that, you'd have lawyers all over them. I guess in the Socialist Republic of uh, Russia, do they have lawyers? Do lawyers have any say so? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, they 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 have lawyers. I have even uh, uh, some uh, good friend who is a lawyer back in the Ukraine. But at the Soviet time, of course, uh, every lawyer was uh, was paid by the state and uh, was uh, performing the will of the state. Well, otherwise, you know, every, otherwise they would not be a lawyer. Is that correct? If they yeah. didn't perform the will of the yeah. state, they would lose their ability to be a lawyer. You know, I, I would I would advise uh, your um, listeners to read uh, a Gulag Archipelago of Alexander Solzhenitsyn. It's a uh, it's kind of uh, three volumes of uh, big uh, writings. But um, uh, it's important, uh, I think, to understand more deeply and completely. And uh, there in that book, uh, and I describe it in one of my podcasts uh, uh, on subject of religious freedom, uh, there was a story how a Russian patriarch uh, was pr uh, prosecuted uh, by, uh, by Soviet regime. Even a patriarch, he was a famous uh, figure uh, worldwide, but he was prosecuted. And... Uh, any any lawyer who wanted to defend him was just replaced with another one, you know. <laughs> uh, even though, uh, even, even though when he was walking in the court, or, uh, most people were standing up uh, uh, you know, for, for for respect of him, you know, uh, because uh, somewhere deeply inside Russian people they still uh, uh, believed in God or something, uh, some sanctity, you know. Uh, but uh, that's what Soviet regime did, you know. They didn't uh, want uh, any uh, Christian believer to be properly defended and uh, justly prosecuted, you know. Yeah. I have a question. You said that uh, you became a Christian because of your grandparents. Do you know how they became a Christian? You know, um, in our family, we had a, a kind of discipline of faith every morning our dad would call us uh, call us up to the prayer and read the bible and then at noon if he was home he would uh, call us to the prayer and read the bible so uh it's very important for the father of the home to call the family to task and pray and study the bible yes. Yeah, yeah. You, listen, uh, uh, like we're talking about uh, a, f a physical uh, part of our survival, about homestead. We grow food, yes. you know, so we have something to eat, so we will live and not die. So if people are uh, able to spend so much time and effort to feed uh, their uh, f physical body that will eventually... Uh, die and go in a in a grave. In a, in a, so, so what about feeding your uh, uh, spiritual Spirit. being? What uh, was important uh, to bring a spiritual freedom to young people in the uh, Soviet Union? So you were in the streets of Russia. How did you minister to them? You know, I had my uh, backpack, I had my sleeping bag, and I I, I, I traveled hitchhiking. Uh, yeah, with my <laughs> with my guitar, and then uh, one time I saw a picture of a man playing a guitar and a harmonica together, and I said, "God, I want to do that." And he just sent the people uh, uh, f on my way from uh, from England, who uh, then sent uh, harmonicas to my friends because I didn't have address, you know. <laughs> so they just, they sent uh, harmonicas to my friends, and one time uh, I just visited them. It was like art college in St. Petersburg, Russia, and they told me, hey, Alex, here your harmonica is waiting for you for a few months. And of course, we didn't have cell phones or, or telephones even, you know, to communicate. So it was just uh, by traveling, you know, I got there. And um, so since then, I just took, uh, uh, put my, you know, it, they sent me also um, like neck stand for harmonica so I could put uh, hands free, you know, so I could play guitar and harmonica together. 
And so I just put it together, I just began to play, and the, you know, anointing of God just came on me, I think, <laughs> you know, well, not think, I, yeah, I'm sure it I, was, I you know, and uh, I, I begin to play, and people wonder, how, how you can do that, how you can, how, how you can play that uh, two instrument together, I say, I, I, actually, I don't know, I, I just play, <laughs> and I had Bible in my backpack, you know, and I, uh, and I was just uh, coming down to, uh, downtowns of the cities where I travel to and uh, begin to play sitting there you know somewhere in the corner and then young people just begin to come around you know I gotta ask you that uh, when your family left you and you stayed behind and you uh, went to different countries did uh, God provide you a place to stay every time you did you ever have not have a place to lay your head on a pillow yeah, well, most of the time I had a place in somebody's home, but even if I had to uh, use my backpack to sleep somewhere in the field, I was okay, you know. Tell, me, tell yeah. us about your princess from Russia. Well, um, actually, uh, I lived uh, in uh, Oregon and then uh, uh, Christian ministry invited me to help them in Florida. So and I came in Florida and uh, had a chance to get to one uh, uh, pastor's uh, conference uh, in Orlando, and that's where I met my uh, Russian wife. And we live happily thereafter. Uh, one thing she wants me, uh, w w w she wants with me to do with me, she she wants to homestead with me. Uh, I, I think. Uh-oh. Are you still there? Did I lose you? Man. All right, we're what? back with Alex after uh, having a little brief intermission. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Alex is back. We're back connected up. How's it going, Alex? I'm um, okay. You know, we go uh, through any kind of socialistic interventions uh, in our uh, phone system. <laughs> I'm just laughing. Uh, do you have any warnings for us what we should look for as far as socialism uh, infiltrating our freedom I, of America? I see, I see that, uh, you know, American socialists uh, and communists, uh, uh, they trying to seduce uh, American people in thinking or believing that uh, Soviet socialism was uh, bad, but our socialism here in America can be good. I just want to tell uh, your listeners that there uh, cannot be uh, good socialism. Uh, and, um, of course, uh, more on that subject, uh, I have a podcast that uh, has a title, Good Socialism. So, if And you, you explained know, to us earlier in this uh, podcast about those socialist ideas of those same fathers what they really entail like you do being someone who had to walk through the potato fields and pick the worms out throw them in cans and then actually and actually actually we, call, actually we called them uh, colorado bugs because it was some kind of a conspiracy conspiracy theory uh, that americans uh, uh, were sent uh, somehow brought um, maybe on the ships uh, uh, this uh, box from America from Colorado in some laboratories in Colorado, so they destroy uh, Soviet crops or potatoes. What is it? What What is it that happened in Russia when they listened to the Socialist Republic of Russia as far as their dream? Well. They said they will build a, a communism. You know, um, some people say they survived communism, but I call my podcast uh, Socialism Survival because nobody lived under communism. Communism is kind of like a ghost. It's like the uh, idea or, or, of a better future that never came and never will come. You know, so we lived in a system called uh, developed uh, socialism. You know, and... Um, that's what they made us to live, to live by the dream. And now uh, uh, President uh, Obama, he wants us to live uh, in another dream world, you know. Uh, you'll but, notice. Uh, I, I, I'd, I'd better prefer uh, 
the American reality of owning owning land, owning business, and uh, my uh, my own business, and not let the government to interfere in my personal life. Well, I have and, to uh, apologize to my listeners because I never listen. I never mentioned any president. Unless he died before I was born, and you mentioned oh. Obama. Oh well, no, no, that's wow. okay. No, you're, you're not Johnny Mac. You're a guest. You have the prerogative to do that, and I appreciate. I appreciate you. Uh, I hope that our listeners learned a lot about. I Russia. know I did. I did too. I really did learn. Listen, a lot. Johnny Mac. I I don't have um, uh, as a believer, as a man of God. You know, I don't have. Uh, Anything personally like against president and or any, against any people? Oh, what, what, what I'm saying that there, there is an evil, uh, a spiritual uh, system behind all this uh, socialism yes. stuff, you know. And in the fusions that our, our fight is not uh, against uh, flesh and blood. Well, who's our fight against? Well, the demonic powers that uh, doing all this uh, stuff that uh, it's it's uh, it's a uh, it's our major battle in that area. I'm not saying we ha- we shouldn't go and vote. Yes, as a citizens and and Bible says that we have to follow the laws. Uh, so if the law uh, uh, tells us uh, to go and vote. Well, yeah, we no, go and walk. I'm not you know, trying we, to... I'm we, not... We, 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 are, we should be honest in expressing our views and our understanding of uh, system and our choice of political way, you know. Uh, but uh, the major uh, battle is still to be fought in the spiritual realm, in my understanding. Me being a former missionary, I put a target on my back. And my whole family is a target, and I ask it every listener of this show, please pray for me and pray for Alex, because the devil does not forget his targets. And uh, I am a target, my friend Alex, and you are a target. So stay prayed up, dude. <laughs> All right, you got, you got anything to uh, say, signing off to our listeners, Mr. Alex? Well, uh, I want to one day to... Uh, Try your homemade beer, and uh, <laughs> you are a good man. <laughs> and and I will uh, uh, and I'll probably bring uh, a Russian style of uh, salted fish, you know, like Turkey style salted fish. Well, you've but, already uh, educated it's, us. It's, it's, gonna... very, it's very popular in the, in Russia with beer. You know, I want I want uh, uh, to encourage your uh, your listeners. To build uh, homesteads because that's what we want to do, you know. And yes. we uh, keep, uh, I'll keep listening to your uh, podcast, you know, and learning. You had three podcasts that you recommended in 2010. You recommended Jack Spirico's podcast, the Survival yep. Podcast, and you recommended the Self Sufficient Homestead. Can you please explain why? Because, uh, I mean, we, we know our principal tenets and our understanding and belief, but uh, I would like to know what your understanding and belief as far as why you would recommend the Self-Sufficient Homestead as being a podcast that people should listen to. Well, in that podcast, when I mentioned uh, your uh, podcast, I was talking about uh, physical, uh, about mental, uh, mental and uh, Mental. Unplugging from the government and uh, yeah. being self sufficient and doing it for yourself and not requiring uh, input from other people? Yeah, you, uh, you, you, so you need to survive in, you know, like in, in, in three areas uh, physical, spiritual, and emotional, and mental, you know. But let's say this as a spiritual being, you cannot survive on this earth. Uh, you know, if you're dead, you know, so you need to feed yourself. You picked up on our spiritual, uh, but we tried to hide that. We were Christians, and we were not trying to be Christians in your face. We were just trying to educate people to be uh, self-sufficient on their own, but somehow you picked up on our uh, Christian aspect. That's all uh, inseparable for me, you know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, <laughs> okay, well, you know, I was just you know, curious. You know, you know, you know, we need we need uh, somebody talk uh, 
on all these uh, points. Either it's uh, survival, growing like food, or somebody is talking how to survive through the prayer life. You know, it's all important. So, you got any uh, closing notes for our listeners? I just uh, want you to uh, stick with your uh, God, with your family, with uh, the Constitution, and uh, don't let anyone to steal that from you. If you keep that in place, you'll be uh, free, you know, even if everything collapses around you, but uh, that will help you stand uh, strong and so I take it you have read it, the con- read the Constitution of the United States of America. I did. You did, and uh, it yeah. stands on its own, does it not? Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, well, thank you so much, Alex, for being on our show today. We appreciate it. We really enjoyed all your input. It was very educational. Very, and, very. Looking from your eyes. Uh, seeing from your, that's true. Seeing from your point of view. From you, you've been there. We haven't. We, we, we greatly appreciate that you came and recorded our show today. Well, so the show doesn't get too long. Uh, We're going to go ahead and wrap it up. And that was a very eye-opening interview. And I do want to thank Alex uh, for taking the time and being on the show. Yes, thank you again, Alex. If you have any comments, suggestions, or ideas. Or if you just want to chew the fat. And shoot the breeze. You can email us at. Feedback at sshomestead.com. We hope you enjoyed the show. The show and uh, the next show is going to be on. uh, planting uh, heirloom we were talking about heirloom seeds and uh, as compared to genetically modified seeds till next time be wise be sweet and be, be self-sufficient, self-sufficient.